Last year, the Keychron K2 keyboard burst on the scene as one of the top and really one of the only wireless mechanical keyboards with Mac support. I reviewed it and I loved it, and it was also one of my first experiences with mechanical keyboards in general, so that was awesome. But just recently, Keychron pushed out an update to the K2, just calling it version 2, with a couple of slight adjustments, and let's go ahead and talk about it now. So first, I want to summarize what made this keyboard special to begin with. It featured and still features a Mac slash iOS slash iPadOS mode as well as Windows mode and it includes Mac keys by default on the keyboard but they give you Windows keys that you can swap out as well. And the default mode of this keyboard is Bluetooth making it one of the not too many on the market that has reliable Bluetooth connections but you can always use the USB-C cable included to manually connect it to any device that you have and this works great. Secondly, it came in standard options of red, brown, and blue switches with 4mm plus or minus 0.4mm of travel, which sounded and felt awesome. And that's a lot of key travel even for a mechanical keyboard. It can also change the backlight options on the keyboard. And lastly, it was just pretty compact, albeit pretty thick, keyboard that didn't take up too much desk space, which was really nice. So what's new and how does it compare overall? Well, it now features Bluetooth 5.1 for more reliable connections and faster switching between devices. As with the first generation, you can use function plus one, two, and three buttons on the keyboard to switch between three different devices, which is great. And yeah, it does appear to be faster this year. As you can see while I switch between my iPad and my MacBook Pro here, it takes just a fraction of a second to transition, and that's pretty impressive. Now, I still do have my gripe with the speed of initial connection, such as when you just turn on your computer or get back to your computer. I certainly turned off auto sleep mode, which would have slept the keyboard after 10 minutes of inactivity, because it sometimes would take 5 to 10 seconds to reconnect to my computer. But it can occasionally still take a couple seconds to reactivate connection with auto sleep mode turned off, but it appears to be a little bit better than last year. And of course, if you opt for the USB-C wired connection, it completely removes that problem. Secondly, the profile of this keyboard is no longer flat. The bottom of the keyboard is slightly lower and thinner, and the top is now relatively higher, which makes for a slightly more comfortable typing experience, at least for my typing position. Some people may still need a wrist pad, which Keychron is actually selling now if you want to get it from them, but I've found that I'm okay without one. Of course, you still have your two adjustable feet on the back of the keyboard, which is a great feature and well implemented. There's also a new indicator for caps lock, but it's not always the most obvious indicator depending on the color that you have selected for backlighting. And finally, this time I chose the brown switches versus the blue switches I got last time. And obviously there's a sound difference between those two keys, but I've also read that there's a slight sound difference in general between the first and second generation. So here's a sound test of both blue version number one and brown version number two. As you can hear, it does sound really good. And other features on this keyboard remain constant. Battery seems to be a bit better in my testing, lasting a week with auto sleep turned off and a couple hours of typing a day. My RGB color model is pretty sweet with a lot of different color profiles. If you don't like the RGB mode or the backlighting in general, you can save a few bucks and go for a different color profile or none at all, so you can kind of have it as you want it. And the typing experience is still excellent. Very satisfying, easy and responsive, and music to my ears when typing. I do like the brown switches as a nice middle ground between red and blue. So at the end of the day, this amazing keyboard just got better. Just a little bit better. I wouldn't go out and buy this if I already had the first generation of it, but if you're on the market, it's a great reason to pick up the K2 version 2. It comes in different switches, backlighting, and frame options, and this is really a great option for using with your iPad, with your Mac, or even on a Windows computer, but especially for 
Mac and iPad and even iPhone, this is a really, really solid option that, again, I'm a huge fan of. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check this out. That's about all for this video. Thank you very much for watching.